Welcome to the Holistic Skin Guru, where what's on the surface is just as important as what's underneath. I'm your host, Amina. Let's dive deep into the world of holistic skincare. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode. And today we're gonna to be talking about sunscreen. A very controversial topic to some, and it can spark a little bit of debate. So if I contradict myself, it's just part of the information that's out there around sunscreens. Um, and I'm gonna dive into it straight away. So what is sunscreen? Sunscreen is a topical treatment that blocks the UV rays or the sun rays from our skin to protect it in some way or form. Um, many of us don't actually think about why we need this. And I, I know in Australia, there's more of us that are aware of skin cancers and are aware of the damage that sun, the sun can do to our skin. And so for us, we're almost being programmed into using sunscreens. Remember the Slip Slop Slap campaign back in the 80s? As kids, you know, we were trained into wearing sunscreens more so than our parents and our grandparents. So let's talk about that for a little while. If you've noticed, um, our grandparents really didn't care about sunscreen much. Um, in the 70s and 80s, it was fashionable to rub coconut oil all over your body and lay in the sun and uh, present a beautiful tan. And over the years, there's been a huge campaign by governments and the medical associations to get people to protect their skin from the sun due to skin cancers. So this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, they did a study in, I think it was the US, it could have been the UK, so don't quote me on that. They did a study at a university where they grabbed some lab rats or mice. So they did this experiment and they found that uh, when they put one group of mice who were fed uh, a nutritional um, diet, and exposed to some sunlight, normal sunlight during the day. And then they took a second group of mice and they fed them a high sugar, high calorie diet, very much like what they call a typical American fast food diet. And they put that um, group of mice under the same amount of light each day, sunlight each day as the first group. And they did this for uh, many, many months and they found that the group of mice that had been exposed to or had been fed a highly toxic diet developed skin cancers. The ones that were eating a nutritious diet did not, and they both had the same amount of sunlight. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that over the years, our diets have changed. Our grandparents ate whole foods, healthy foods in most cases they grew their own food and we today fast forward 80 years or 90 years we are the ones that are consuming high fat high sugar diets with a lot of processed foods and that is affecting the way our skin functions so that's why i said that today's episode is going to be a bit controversial because on one hand i'm saying to you wear the sunscreen and on the other hand i know exactly why you need to wear that sunscreen because in the back of my mind i'm saying to myself well actually we don't need the sunscreen because the sun is good for us vitamin d is good for us if we looked after our bodies well and we gave ourselves a nutritional diet and we looked after ourselves that way we probably would not need sunscreen but because you know there's pollution in the air there's preservatives in our food, there's rubbish in our water. All of that affects the health of our bodies and is affecting the way our skin is reacting to the UV light from the sun and it's presenting in a lot of us as skin cancers. So something for you to think about and a little bit contro controversial. I'll probably have some people in the comments telling me off and that's fine. Uh, but this is what I have found in my research. So how does the SPF work? There's two forms of SPF. There's a chemical blocker and there is a physical blocker. So some SPFs that you find, some sunscreens you'll find uh, have a very high ingredients of chemicals in them that actually help 
to block the sun from the skin and then the more organic or natural or holistic type of sunblocks the ones that we carry have physical blockers in them so they contain zinc and they are protecting the skin from the uv light that way so those are the two that you'll see the chemical blockers and the uh, physical blockers and one more thing i'd like to add is that when it comes to chemical blockers there are some chemical blockers and this seems like an oxymoron to me but it's out there there's the information is out there you can find it very easily um, there are some spfs or sunscreens that contain chemicals that actually cause cancer so this seems counterintuitive but it actually is the case and so please be wary about what you put on your skin if you're buying sunscreens for the summer months that are coming up in australia uh, you might want to go to the beach and you go to your local pharmacy or your uh, grocery store and you're grabbing SPF for your kids. Please leave, read the ingredients and try to get physical blockers instead of um, artificial chemical blockers for your sunscreens. We want to make sure that when we go out in the sun, putting all of that aside that I just mentioned, that when we go out in the sun, we are not exposing the sun in a, a skin to the sun in a negative way and causing other issues such as hyperpigmentation. Pigmentation in the skin is one of the most difficult things to treat. And so by protecting our skin from the harsh rays of the sun and preventing that hyperpigmentation from forming is probably the best thing for you. Prevention is always better than cure. Um, so that is probably the, what, the biggest thing that we see is that people are coming to us consistently asking us to treat them for their pigmentation. And I've got some good news. I will do another podcast on that. We've got another exciting treatment coming that's going to help people with pigmentation issues. It certainly helped me with my pigmentation. So cancer is a big thing. And especially in Australia with the, the ozone layer right above us here in Queensland, we are, have been trained and programmed to wear our sunscreens. All I'm asking for you to do is look at the ingredients and make healthy choices when it comes to your SPFs and uh, understanding how you need to reapply those. So the SPF is the sun protection factor and it usually has a number next to it. Uh, you might see SPF 10 or 15 or 30. Sometimes you see 40, 45. 50 and sometimes you even see 80 and 100. In Australia, I think the Medical Association doesn't allow anything more than 50, but in other countries you may see 80 or 100 spectrum. All this means it gives you an indicator of how often to reapply your product. So for example, if it takes you 10 minutes to burn normally in the sun, what you would do is you would take your sunscreen, which is, and look at the SPF on it. If it says, say, SPF 30, for example, what you do is you take the number 30 and you multiply it by 10, the number of minutes it takes you to burn. That will give you a number. So you'll end up with 300. 300 minutes is what that translates to before you need to reapply. So that's what that means. And it's going to be different for every one of you. So if you know how long it takes you to burn, do the calculation based on the SPF that you're wearing, and then you'll know how, how often to reapply your SPF. So for all you ladies who apply an SPF in the morning, and I, I know a lot of clients say to me, oh, but my makeup has SPF in it, and that's fine. Uh, it may only have an SPF of 15, and if it takes you 10 minutes to burn, you've only, you're only covered for 150 minutes. So if you're applying that at seven o'clock in the morning, by the time you get to work and before you even get to morning tea, you need to be reapplying. So this is something really important for you to start thinking about. And um, so yes, that number, the higher the number, the less frequently you need to reapply. And, but it will also depend on your skin's Fitzpatrick and how long it takes for you to burn in the sun. So very important. I hope that helped you to um, understand how to use your SPF correctly. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer those questions on the next podcast. 
Uh, if you've liked this video, give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as usual, we'll see you on the next podcast. If you like this podcast and you love our content, please leave us a review. We are happy to give you a 10% discount. If you would like to come in to experience our salon, just comment podcast in the booking online. The links are below and I'll see you on the next podcast.